Jacques Chassin, French guy, and uh, I joined Adidas in 1981. My dream was always to join Adidas because I loved sports, I loved also a brand. My name is Markus Thaler. I am working now for Adidas almost 41 years. I am studying in the age of 14. I was working close to Mr. Dassler as well, because in this time he was only three technicians who are making patterns, who are making outsoles, who are making molds and so on. Uh, it's really fun still in my age, you know, to work with this young team to build up such good things like original shoes in Adidas. ZX was meant to be a range which at that time was responding to the needs and requirements of runners. It was uh, something which I was a little bit the initiator to because at that time I was a little bit lost and I couldn't see really a serious, I would say a serious runner running shoe. And that's the, the foundation of what we can call the ZX. 17. This was uh, the original idea of uh, ZX800, of this one, from a bottom construction. This was this kind of uh, accordion device here. It was doing something like this, and it was when it was collapsing, this came out here. This here some of our idea of how you can do this EVA to density, let's say in a four foot could be harder here, in a rear foot it could be harder here. So it was a kind of a reverse side, something like that here. Uh, this were a little bit some rough drawings of a ZX, you know, torsion thing. This kind of uh, orientation, uh, torsion ability in the upper. You can see this kind of V-shape here. Because of uh, the torque effect, it was going a different way both sides. This was a long time ago, I even thought about a suede heat shield on an iron. So it's still something which is uh, something going on today, you know. I was like, uh, it's about more than 20 years and, you know, velour, which is suede, heat seal. Hey, okay, so that's a bit. The ideas basically, from a design standpoint, are coming from me, but the other ideas from a development point of view, from uh, how the shoe should be built at the end of a technical problems you can uh, reach. This stuff is done by Markus. So you have two guys, they have to work together. Not only from a functional point of view, but also from a production point of view. The big problem is that in a running shoe, you should be able to wear the shoe barefoot. That means, Comfort is, has to be a maximum thing. This is basically the kind of pattern making in the beginning of the ZX8000, 20 years ago. So we have to tell everything by hand. This is the basic patterns. And uh, this was 20 years ago. And 18 years ago, we changed from handmade patterns or everything by hand to the computer. You can see over here, and now we can also build up the parts. And even is uh, a modification on the parts. All uh, dependent lines is switching together with the modified line. So, and then you see all the parts who are necessary for the ZX8000 in our new version. Almost 30 or 35 parts who are necessary to build up the shoes. If you look at the original shoe, you have all the pieces are like overlays. That means you see rough edges and you see stitchings. So it's like this construction is like it was done in 89. So it's more regular, conventional construction. Doing this in a stitch and turn thing, it gives you a kind of more, I would say, more luxury look here. Because you have some nice, you don't see this kind of rough edges. It's really nice. It's, uh, you don't see the stitchings. It's I would say smooth, more clean, but keeping the same design and not having this kind of thicknesses or material you can see here. There was something necessary to modify it compared to the ZX for 20 years ago. Then was needed to build up a little bit more around the curve over here. 
but otherwise it will be too complicated to make it in a stitch and turn way. As we can see over here, the edge on this curve was much rounder, so we can use the stitch and turn on this. And who gives us the possibility that we don't have C, we don't see any seams over here in this area. And even here on the inside, there's no seams to the foot who give you no pressure, nothing at all. The idea was to do a kind of final ZX shoe. Keeping the same design, but uh, using the constructions, the technologies, the equipment, people of today. Both of us, I think we were pretty proud to be in this project and to try to do something to help this project going on. Proud is a personal feeling because uh, these products, we have proven in the past that these products were from a Nadidas performance standpoint, they are really good, good running shoes. It was probably also something new for us because it was a, a different approach, which probably was not so much from a performance side of, point of view, but more from a fashion point of view. Uh, this is a totally different shoe now compared to 20 years ago, you know. We started to think about and looking based on drawings, basically looking at the shoe and trying to find out how can I construct the shoe different ways. We want to keep the bottom as it is because it's a functional bottom and we want to keep this functional side as it was in the past. My objective is to try to find out the best construction, the best materials, the best silhouette, the best volume, the best shape. And then I have to discuss it with Marcus and he can tell me, oh, be careful. It's, it's not an easy construction, that's clear. So you have to be sure that from a proportion point of view, from a line point of view, everything is okay to achieve that construction. a different way, a different interpretation, which I, I, I like, you know. It's surprising too, because it's uh, uh, some interpretation of the shoes. It's just, I would say, even unexpected. Shark is the guy who really explain his idea in really details and you try to make the idea happen on the upper or on the outsole as well, you know. We, we are really a shoe background and, and that's the thing, but uh, we also have kind of respect for each other. What one is asking, the other one understands the question. The input or the feedback or the interpretation you can see here shows that it's coming from Asia, it's coming from Europe, it's coming from uh, America. So it's a really worldwide inspiration uh, package. And it's really, I think it's, it's just great. For me, each product has a special attitude. And from a design point of view, it's each product is trying to transmit a message. What is also a part of our brand is this multicultural thing, which is great here, which is, a, I would say, a great example from a styling point of view and from a color point of view, because you can really see different stuff. It's not exactly the same. 